Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I look back. I mean, honestly, I look at Lamar Odom and I, and I, I, I you know, jokingly, I would knock him out the way. <laughs> he's terrible. I mean, you know, his last fight yeah. he fought. Uh, he fought the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, oh, it, it, it was man, terrible. it was. It Mike, was, you would light him up. We might have to get you in there. <laughs> oh man, hey, there, there was one part of me like when I was training. <laughs>
with all that, do you think, you know, with the celebrities and the yeah. YouTubers, the Pauls, brother, do you think it's helping the, the sport of boxing? Do you feel, feel it's like that, that's what it? It's a great, great question because that's my biggest conundrum because it's so hard. Like I, I, I was just saying before, a friend of mine, you may he may have trained you, Miguel Perez. He's a, yeah, yeah. The, the, the big heavy stick yeah, guy. Yeah, no, no, this is the guy. He's a really good-looking Hispanic kid at the gym. Oh, yeah, he yeah fights, the short one. Yeah, he yeah. fought on the uh, the last card at the Toyota Center. Kid's a great man. His brother and I were friends, Benjamin, and Benjamin got killed in the ring. Oh. Uh, my, my trainer, Bobby Benton, that owns the downtown Sorry gym. Yeah, yeah, it was, you know, that's part, you go in there, you know, this is something that can happen, you know. So when I see that, like a kid like Miguel, he's been in the gym, it seems like forever, and these guys are busting their butt to make money, and, mm -hmm. you know, but on the flip side, I look at it with um, the fight when um, Tyson and Roy Jones, no, not Tyson, Roy Jones, but uh, Jake Paul fought um, uh, Mayweather. Mayweather, okay. yeah, we had a guy, no, it wasn't that one, it was a different one, but anyway, we had a guy from our other gym, Main Street Boxing, that mm -hmm. he was the only only real fight on the card. It was, um, it was, it was, what's his name? The, the wrestler fought, the the Jake Paul, one of the Pauls fought, um, fought a UFC guy, an old UFC guy. No, and he knocked him out, he knocked him out. Uh, I mean, I know what, you, yeah, I know I what the one you're talking about. But we yeah. had the only real fighter on the card, and that, the most he ever would have made on a card, on a show like that, was probably 200 grand. He got a million bucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, you know, tripled the purse. So that's, okay. you know, that's the ultimate goal for these guys to have a good life and make some money. So it, I, I'm kind of torn, you know, now I'm in the mix of it, you know. So yeah, that, yeah. And I look at, I mean, honestly, I look at Lamar Odom and I, and I, I, I you know, jokingly, I would knock him out the way. <laughs> he's terrible. I mean, you know, his last fight yeah. he fought, uh, he fought the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, oh, it, man, it, it was, man, it was it Mike, was, you would light him up. We might have to get you in there, <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, there, there was one part of me, like, when I was training, <laughs> there was one part of me, like, you know, because, you know, I, I, I loved working out, love yeah. training. I think there's something we kind of, I listen to you and we no, kind of bounce enjoy, back. I enjoy I, it. That, I, I love it. And just, just, you know, listen to your teaching and just trying to perfect what you're saying yeah. and 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 putting all your effort into it you yeah. you have no shot but to get better yeah. but uh but on another note like uh we talked about school what inspired you when you, well, you I gotta was tell you one more thing yeah. i just found this out this morning i can't believe it yeah. lenny dykstra you remember lenny dykstra he was the center, he was a great baseball player great baseball player he's uh, he's 57 years old he's uh -huh. fighting uh the guy that lamar Odom beat aaron carter uh -huh. yeah, it's terrible Terrible, actually. I'm Man, sorry, no, no, it's all good. It just, it just, you <laughs> I know, just heard that this it morning, just, I and, and when you when you put that in, um, because you know how media, social media has changed. It is the the, the game of, of boxing. I remember researching, uh, and um, when you, you know, a lot of people know, you, you know, you was knocking people out. You went from what thirty six and old yeah. to like nineteen ninety one, I believe, and then your management team. Yeah. Created a, a loose, Sever yeah, Severese I, fan page. Yeah, that, that helps so much. It, but but now, like you're saying, magnify at times. You know, every because I mean, at one touch, you're in, you have the whole world at your fingertips. Yeah, right? and and that's how 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 do you think social media and uh, opened up your horizons and. Well, it's right now, I mean, it really it wasn't a big part of my career, but right now, I actually, I'll tell you this, Mike, I, I actually have a guy coming in uh, Sunday, he's going to be meeting, I'm going to be with him, that, that's all he does, he just mm -hmm. does marketing, I mean, it's become the face of your business, and if my business is getting a fight, like a guy, Shannon Briggs, I'd love to fight. He's gotten really popular on social media, and I I don't know why. You know, I don't. It's just you know, to me, it looks kind of hokey. But there there's a method behind it. You know, yeah. so I have a guy that that's all he does is social media. He's coming to meet with me on Sunday, and we'll see. You know, because I think obviously when I was fighting, if you can make the more you can make yourself a marquee name, the more money you would mm -hmm. demand. You know, so hopefully that that'll help out. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And the the business of boxing. Yeah. You know, uh, I want to talk about you know you open gyms, multiple gyms. What, what age and what career, what stage in your career did you open the gym, and how did that come about? You know, it's it, it was kind of a natural progression. I was in real estate in uh, 2008, which was not a good time to be in real estate. I had about 40, yeah. 40 townhomes on, on the ground in different stages, and it was just a tough time. Yeah. So um, the gym was kind of a layup for me per se. I, I was uh, the gym I was training at 
Um, my trainer owned it with his dad, Bill, and Bill retired. Bill Benton and Bobby Benton. Bobby's become one of the great trainers here in town. But we, it just seemed like a natural, so I took it over. We made it we, we made it a little bit more um, approachable for white-collar guys, you know. Mm -hmm. So we made the downstairs, which was originally storage, we made it a, uh, you know, more for white-collar people. So it turned out, it, that turned out really good, you know. But that's totally different from the the business of boxing. It's just, it's changing now, but it was, you know, it, it, no pun intended, but it's had a black eye since the beginning of boxing history, mm -hmm. you know. The mob was always involved in it in the 30s and the 40s, and then it's just, you know, again, you know, not, it's just, you know, it just brings a, a crazy element to boxing. I don't know why, but, you know, King, King was, you know, in jail for manslaughter, yeah. but, and I like Don King, it's yeah. just, but, you know, these guys, Aaron was a real smart guy, he was, um, on the uh, U.S. District Attorney's Office, and he was a real smart guy, and he would get you a contract, you know. So, crazy, crazy business. Man, yeah, crazy business. <laughs> I wanted to write a book called Everything You Didn't Want to Know About Boxing and More. Like, pe people would not believe the stuff that goes on. Hey, I said, do it, do it. <laughs> I, I, I encourage my mother. She's she's uh, she's inducted Hall of Fame, too. Really? In uh, basketball. Wow. And That's I so finally... Cool. Beat, uh, got her to write her book. Good so she, you know, she played in Olympics. Uh, wow, I didn't you know, know Pan that. Americans. So cool. You know, it's so. yeah. The Pan Am Games was, was when I was fighting. That was like it was the second biggest tournament besides the Olympics. The Pan Am Games were huge. Right oh, wow, yeah. wow, 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 wow. Ah. Mike, was she from the states? Or? She's uh, from Arkansas. She, okay, like uh, yeah, she played uh, Arkansas, and wow. then. Um, she went to uh, a little small school in Texas, yeah. uh, P P Panola, and then she went to SFA. Wow. And then from there, she went to the Olympics. I got a son and, at SFA. Oh, so So we son, got ties to both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ties to both. Yeah, mom, uh, <laughs> I'm Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 they say it's a party school. Is it like, really? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they say it's a party school. And they, and they I, don't know, I really don't know who my kids are. If they, if they look like me, I went to, my, my older guy, he's got like a 4.0. He's taking, I was like, wow. I, see. I went up to see his uh, dorm, and I was like, wow, this is nice. And it was beautiful. It's like a high rise. It's called yeah. Inspires up there. And I said, how's the pool? He goes, I don't know. I go, what do you mean? I said, I haven't been to the pool. I got to study. I was like, Dude, I would have been at the pool the whole time. <laughs> God, that's why you were going to college. You know, hey, so. hey, about to study. Hey, that was that was the same for me. That was me. not my thing. Hey, studying. I, 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 I remember. I remember a story. Uh, my mom, you know. I thought, you know, I was super cocky, especially when I started getting to high school. And, you know, I'm they calling my name out every every week for me getting another award, an All-American. So my mom told me, she's a teacher, she's a coach. She said, son, you need to get your grades up yeah. or else you can't go to the big school. And I'm like, mom, you know, that's when the program, the movie came out. And I'm yeah. like, mom. If they want me, they gonna do whatever it takes to get me. You know, I'm an all American in, fo in football and basketball by my senior year. So she's like, son, you ain't gonna go to the big school. So I went the GPA. I went to the schools. I was taking D. T I was taking junior college visits. My my grace was that bad. No, I had the same thing. I had a baseball scholarship. I had a baseball scholarship to. A really good school in Florida, but I had to bring my GP up, uh, GPA at a community college in New York, and I didn't do it. I just I thought I'd make the pros in baseball. I didn't uh -huh. make it, and you know, so stuck with boxing. Okay, and and <laughs> and, 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 and and let me know what the trajectory. I, I uh, yeah. know from football, you know, you go to high school, you go to college, and then you get you go to draft. How does it work in the boxing from that, amateurs? That's a great question, yeah. Mike, because it's so. The boxing is so unstructured. There's not one governing body. Mm -hmm. But even to go back before that, there's no, like, I mean, there's guys, I mean, people would think, they wouldn't believe me, but you could, I mean, anybody could turn pro. There's no prerequisite. I mean, nothing. Basically, you have to pay for your license. That's it. I mean, anybody can turn pro. Okay. There's okay. no prerequisite. Now, if you want to turn pro and win, there's a, you know, an, a, uh, a, you know, an etiquette or you need to cover these different, you know, like getting amateur, the more amateur fights you have, the better to a, to a degree. There's some lightweights that like, when I was in, I was living in the Olympic Training Center from, uh, for four years I lived there. It's called Operation Gold. They, mm -hmm. uh, for 88, from 84 to 88, and they had me and Riddick Bowe, we were the two top guys at the time. And we were both living out there, but they would take guys and they would just, you know, put them out there. But if you didn't have a, a, a great amateur uh, background, you know, it was very hard to make it into pros because there's a big stigma about being undefeated. But most of the guys, you know, I mean, most of the guys you see, great fighters, they had really good amateur backgrounds. Mm. I think Marvis Frazier was the only, he was the, he was the, he had like, um, he, he became a, a champion in like 10 fights. You know, he wound oh, up wow. beating Larry Holmes. It was a big upset. 
Man, that's amazing. That's, yeah. uh, and and you said you uh, went and competed for the uh, the Olympic. The yeah, Olympic I lost trials. in the Olympic trials in '88. Uh, the uh, the Olympics to go to the '88 Olympics. I I lost to Bo in the uh, semifinals in Concord, California. Man, so man. we got to go to rematch. Man. Man. Yeah, so we got to get that rematch. Bo, go. Bo should have been one of the greatest fighters. He was a great fighter, but he he was amazing. He was just this guy. Was just a freak of nature. Couldn't bench press. 200 pound, but would just if he touched his like knocked down a building, he just had these huge hands. He was yeah. a big, strong guy, man, and could fight inside too. So, how was how was explain how that experience that Olympic trial experience was? Well, for me, that was like at the point I, I didn't think I'd ever get over that because that was my dream to make the Olympics. Uh -huh. you know? So, I, li I, lived, I lived out in the Olympic training center in Colorado Springs for four years, and they were grooming me and both to make you know, hopefully make the Olympics. We were the top two guys, but Bo wound up making it, and he was a much better fighter than me back then. He was, you know, he, Bo, people don't realize, he, he won the Junior uh, junior Olympics at 147. I mean, he was, you know, he won, when he won, when I was there, he was super heavyweight, 240, you know. Mm -hmm. But, so that's it. You want to try and get that, you know, so I tried to, uh, Bo beat me in the Olympic trials in the uh, semifinals, so that was, and I, I thought life was over right then. I was... I was man, I was hurting, but I wanted I wanted uh, the Olympics. So that was my dream for yeah, so long. Yeah, you know, it, it was tough. Man, that, that, that's amazing. I, my mother, you know, she talked about because I, I I'm having to write her book, and she talked about the Olympics, and yeah. and she said there was like a like a super a surreal experience yeah. where they had like a hundred girls out there. They was all she actually went to the Olympics. Yeah, right? she went oh, to the Olympics, that's amazing. and she remember. said you know it was just so many people out there just trying out, wow. and I was like, yeah, because the year we went, it was going to be in Seoul, Korea. That's the year uh, Roy Jones went all those guys. Uh -huh. Yeah, eighty eight. So, uh, that's and Roy Jones, my and you saw them fight. Would would you be open for something like that? And, and, yeah, who, you would, know, listen, and who would you be paired for? Oh, I, I, I you know listen right now. I mean. Uh, they were talking about uh, James Tony, who was a great fighter at, at you know at middleweight heavyweight. He's not a, a great fighter, you know. And he, uh, I stay in good shape. A lot of these guys, they get it really like Bo's in really bad shape. I don't mm -hmm. know how he would even fight, you know. So I got a call this morning. Do you remember Jerry Cooney, the the Great White Hope? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cooney's yeah. a good friend of mine. He's got a, a real successful podcast. But uh, we're we're really good friends. But Cooney. Uh, he was in history. They call it's called the the Great White Hope. Mm -hmm. He was free fought Larry Holmes. And it was the first time ever the challenger got more money than the champion. Holmes yeah. Holmes never forgave that. But yeah. anyway, Cooney was calling me. Said, "Hey, listen, uh, he's the announcer at this fight when uh, Bo's going to fight Lamar Odom." Uh -huh. And he said, "Listen, man, you, you might want to see if you can get the Lamar Odom fight because Bo's in bad shape. Bo, he don't know if he's going to take the fight. I was like, yeah. oh, man, I, I would fight Lamar Odom. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I, hey, nah. hey I'll I, I be watching some of them fights and I'll just, I be, I just be laughing. I saw Mayweather fight uh, the guy in Japan. Who is that? Uh, I forgot his name, but it was just just a, a similar fighter, yeah. same weight, you know. Yeah. But you know, he was in Japan, and he kind of like knocked him out. He was laughing and dancing the it, whole time. That's crazy. I mean, Mayweather, and, you know, one of the top, I put him top ten best ever defensive fighters ever. Oh yeah, He's over fighting a guy what Jake Paul or whatever. There's two Pauls. I don't know which one he fought. Yeah. But he just played with him. I mean, it was yeah, and I saw one where he hit him, and it felt like he hugged him, he from did. not yeah, falling, because he, he, he kind of rocked him, and he was like. Hold on, we yeah. We that's need to... that's the other thing too. A lot of these things are exhibitions. Like I, I like even when they asked me if I bought, they said, "Yeah, we'll do two minute rounds." I said, "No, man, I'm not doing two minute rounds. I, I would rather do three minute rounds. I, I know I'm in better shape than Bo right now. Yeah. You know, Bo even in his heyday, it was more his power, not his condition. Mm -hmm. You know, and now I, I don't know how he's doing. You know, mm -hmm. I listen to uh, you know, just doing a lot of research. I listened to Tyson documentary and talked yeah. about how you know his coach was. You know, feeding his ego, inspiring him, not on, you know, as, you know, not as, you know, on the physical side of yeah. boxing, but as the mental side. Are you you're talking about uh, when it was with Custom With Otto. his coach. Co his, yeah, his coach. Yeah, yeah Cus. And yeah. did you have somebody like that in their corner when you started your career? In, yeah, in I boxing? did. My uncle, was, my uncle was a really good fighter and he was a, a great trainer. And um, when I went to, you couldn't bring your trainers to the Olympic training center. Like Roy Jones. It was uh, it was his him and his dad. I, I don't think they don't even talk anymore. But I liked his dad. We we got along very well, me and Roy and him. But his dad was trying to come out to the Olympic Training Center. And they only let him come once. They wouldn't let him come again. So you have to use the Olympic Training Center's trainers, you know. Yeah. So I I had a great trainer, a guy Pat Nappy. He was a legend in boxing, and Roosevelt Sanders too. So 
it was so you have to go with their trainers. Like the Olympic coaches, you'll just have one, you know, one or two coaches. You can't bring your own coaches to the fights. Oh wow! But uh, you said your uncle was. Yeah, like yeah, that. he was. He was such an inspiration. He was a great fighter when he was younger, and it was, it was so cool to have him. And, and you know, your family they really care about you and yeah. doing it for the right. If, if, I think if it was up to him, he probably wouldn't have wanted me to fight. But since I did it, he wanted to be there and support me. Man, that's amazing. That's that's awesome. Uh, one thing I realize, uh, you know. And and also everybody been talking about uh, Dennis Schroeder, NBA player who didn't. Uh, he supposed to have a job. He post, he was going to sign with the Lakers for eighty four million, but he decided to take a shot on him, bet on himself, and things didn't pan out the way it did. Wait, but, say it again. So, uh, so it was I'm a guy sorry. named uh, Dennis. Yeah, Schroeder. I know. I've heard the name, but he's a uh, NBA uh, basketball player. Right. You know, he declined the contract. Right. The I Lakers, remember hearing that. Yeah. Uh, for eighty four million dollars. And he played out and tried to get a bigger purse, but it didn't work out. Ooh. But the 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 thing I wanted to drive home, he took a he took a gamble on himself. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, we're as you know, professional any professional athlete, entrepreneur, when we go on that route, we're taking a gamble on ourselves. Uh, the, There's the, no guarantee. The meaning, the definition of entrepreneur is a risk taker. A so, risk taker, yeah, yeah. and you know, the people call him. You know, he's donkey, Charlemagne the God call him donkey yeah. of the day. Yeah. People call him crazy. I was like, no, he just took a gamble yeah. on himself. It, it may not work no, I get, I get. financially, but he made it. He's still in the league. He still yeah. have opportunity to play. Yeah. So the thing is, you know, in life, you always got to take risks. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing I, 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 I um, love about you, you took risk. You took a gamble on yourself. You know, you believed in yourself. Yeah. When I don't know anybody else did. I know for me, yeah. when I started out my football journey, you know, I wasn't the fastest. I wasn't the strongest. Yeah. I couldn't even bench 185 coming yeah. out of high school. But <laughs> <I don't believe laughs> <that. laughs> no, no, I, it was my coach. They well, was, you ain't got the perfect body for bench press. Yeah, some long arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had long arms. That's the one thing I used. But he, they, but I just worked at it. But knowing that you know you're taking a risk on yourself, any entrepreneur, any yeah. professional athlete. They're taking a risk on their b abilities with yeah. no guarantee. Yeah, look how many guys, right? And you saw so, so, how many guys, if they don't take, if they get drafted early, they don't take that pro contract, they get a chance of hurting themselves, you know, in, in, while being in college, you know, through basketball or baseball, yeah. too. I mean, uh, basketball, football, if these guys don't take the contract, there's a lot of money on the line. Yeah. You, know, you really have to. There's a lot. And and, and one thing, I, you know, always boxing and what you've done, what was your philosophy when it came to your boxing? You know, it, it, was, it, was, it was a real conundrum in the business part of it because I feel that if – I always used to think about, well, listen, get somebody you really trust in, in the business, and, which is very hard to do in boxing. Yes, exactly. And you get somebody you trust and let them do it because you don't want to be, you got to focus on your fights. But you can't do it in boxing because it's just, it's just, I had a manager that I wound up getting a lawsuit with and uh, just a guy, a very, very wealthy guy. But he just, you know, they, they basically, I had a fight and I, I didn't want to fight because I messed up my shoulder. A big strapping dude, this guy, Michael Grant, and, uh, he just signed a contract, and they called me up, and they said, hey, man, uh, we got a great fight for you. I said, who is it? And they said, uh, Michael Grant. I said, listen, you know, it'll be great in, you know, in about six months, but my shoulder was messed up. I said, listen, you know, let's, that's a good fight. Let's let's take it down the road. And they're like, no, no, you got to take this fight. Uh, it's a great fight. We got you 750000 And at the time, I said, wait a second, guys. I said, I'm not fighting it for seven fifty. I said, there's at least a million in that fight. I said, so I'm like, no, if you don't take the fight, we're going to sue you. And I was like, oh, my goodness. So anyway, I yeah. called. I just got on the phone. I called Lou DiBella, who is the president of HBO Boxing. I knew him from other fights. I said, Lou, what's going on? He said, man, you taking that fight? I said, Lou, I'm banged up right now. I said, how much is in the fight? He said, man, we got a million for you. So right there, <laughs> seriously. They were going to leave 200, or they were going to take the 200. Yeah, they were going to take it. Either one, but that's the stuff. So right there, if I didn't make that call, oh. I wound up getting the fight. I took it. I got it for 1.25, actually. Yeah. yeah. And I wound up getting the fight. I lost it. You know, in retrospect, I probably shouldn't have took it. But it was a lot of money, and, you know, at least the risk of reward. I lost the decision, but uh, I was banged up with my left shoulder. I couldn't jab. You know, that's and that's, and that's the one thing. I, what it correlates to any business or any profession, finding good people in your corner. Yeah. Uh, you know, I went through similar situations, sports agent, yeah, I can't you know, imagine. people I trust, you know, and my whole goal and, you know, it's something that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I 
had to talk the therapist over and get over because you know, no, you know, know we both it. work hard yeah. for our money, and, and especially Mike, in and, the league. And, and, and some of you are very intelligent too. And not not, this, but some guys like in boxing, you know, they don't they're oblivious. They're like you know, but you have to. It's it's good and it's bad because you don't want to be thinking about something else. But you, you just these guys will rape you. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I mean boxing. Boxing more, I mean, there's such a criminal element that it's getting better now, but it, boxing, I mean, I could tell you stories you just couldn't imagine. I mean, it's just crazy the stuff mm-hmm. that they do to these fighters. I mean, King got uh, a great, great, great guy, man, Tim Witherspoon. Witherspoon fought one of the biggest fights of his life and wound up owing King like something like 50 grand. He, he wound up owing him this money. Tyson, same thing. Tyson yeah, sued, yeah. Sued King. He, King got Tyson for a lot of money, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and like I said, you know, it correlates from all sports. It's just finding good people, good-hearted yeah. people. You know, the thing, though, with boxing that is so different than uh, most of the other sports, like you, you got – there's some kind of structured education in, mm-hmm. in you know, football, in, in baseball. You know, guys have some kind of more, – more football, basketball. Like most of them, the majority go through college. There's some kind of education. There's – there's one governing body in boxing is not. I mean, so it's just like every man for himself. There's no, no there's nobody looking over stuff. It's just so because so, there's, there's not one governing body. So you're saying there's nobody to the police. Yeah, the, no. stru- the, uh, the police, the people that's working no, for you. No, no, and, and you know, like people used to say, oh, Aram and King hate each other. They don't. It was almost like GM and Chrysler. They're a monopoly. They they had they had it. Now there's getting to be some new guys because there's so much money in it. There's a guy, Al Heyman, who's the, probably the biggest boxing promoter right now. Now these new people, Chiller, that weren't even boxing people, they've gotten into this and they're making huge money. I mean, oh, yeah. Mayweather got $100 million for that fight. Yeah. $100 million. Yeah, yeah. That's he great. talked about, yeah, and Mayweather, he kind of revolution because I remember talking about him, how he – he owned the, his own pr- promotion company, yeah. you know, and all his other businesses when it came to boxing. So he's not only getting boxing, but yeah. getting money from all different entities for pay per view. The first guy to do that was Trigger Ray Leonard. He was because he he started taking like you just said. He Leonard was the first guy, and I don't know if it was him or his management, but he would share in the uh, he would actually share in the. Um, in the pay-per-views, he would mm-hmm. he would get instead of he would leave some money up front, but he say, "Listen, give me a percentage of the pay-per-views." He wound up when he fought Hagler, he made a huge, huge amount of money. I think at the time it was the the highest paid ever uh, paper. He got a he and Min Hagler both got pieces of the pay-per-view. Mm. And uh, talk about uh, I remember you talked about take us back like when you I remember you say you you lost and you bounced back and you won the, against Douglas. Take us back. How do you? bounce back from a loss and and what what was that area where you got back to you you overcame your adversity yeah. overcame a loss and what centered you and got you back to that you know to that victory to, to bust a buster yeah. It was just I was hungry and I really I wanted to redeem myself. I still want to redeem myself against Tyson. It yeah. was it was such a big stage and to have that and uh, so I I just wanted to I didn't want to go out on that note and I was really so I, I, you know, it was good. I wound up getting a great opportunity. I had to uh, beat a couple of fringe guys, and then I wound up getting the opportunity to fight. Um, I wound up fighting um, Buster Douglas, Buster. and I, yeah, and I wound up beating him. So that was just, it was huge, and it was just, you know, I, I don't want to say luck, but a lot of it is just, you know, things worked out right, and just, you know, you have to stay. And you know, there's three ways to handle a loss: one is quit, mm-hmm. two is do the same thing you're doing, or three is make changes. And we made a lot of changes, and it was great. Uh, my the trainer at the time, Al Bolden, he, he uh, made my jab a lot better, a lot harder. And it was really good. And the jab is a thinking man's punch, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and I remember you talked about how um, uh, in an interview after the fight, you talked about how your weight training got yeah. beefed up. Yeah, yeah. I had a guy here in town. I remember my name was Tim Hallmark, and he was the one who put all the weight on Holyfield. And uh, so he was great. We, it was cool for the Douglas fight. As you know, there's always a game plan, but, you know, rarely – you know, does it work to a T? We had, we did everything. We really, we watched this, and he would just drop his left hand when mm-hmm. he threw the jab, and we're like, why doesn't people take advantage of it? We based our whole thing on doing that, and I wound up catching him with a right yeah, hand. I was yeah. more surprised than he was, man. But because uh, it was one, I saw is it was a one where you connected two times, like you hit him, and yeah. you you kind of you didn't, and you hit him one more a time, yeah, right like hand. right, yeah, right yeah. in the right hand, and that yeah, was, he went down. I was more surprised than him, and I was so happy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then that other one you connected on the uh, man, it's 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 so b- blocking, like yeah. it's it's 
seems like there's no proper way to. Yeah. Dig- Every, it's great. That's a good point you brought up because, I mean, everybody had a different. Um, you know, everybody talks about punching, but blocking is when Foreman came back from his comeback, he had Archie Moore who scripted his whole comeback, gave him a jab, and gave him that, that he used to call it the mongoose style, just covering up like this, you know, uh-huh. and Archie Moore scripted Foreman's comeback from a from a boxing standpoint. Yeah, because it seemed like when you, when you I think you got the, I think the best shot to, who knocked Buster, when you got Buster, you see him, he, he had, he, is, he was like this, yeah. and when you came in, it seemed like you hit his glove, but it yeah. hit like right in that open area yeah. where he had it, and yeah. and that was yeah. a. Tyson got me with a. Uh, I had my hand up, and he still got me. On the I time saw time. that yeah. he was doing like a squat <laughs> jump because you know Tyson he <laughs> like sure. five yeah. four, yeah. and I saw him. He would like jump and punch because <laughs> it was. That so. <laughs> he can punch too, man. He's too, he should have been one of the greatest. He is a great fighter. Yeah, he could yeah. have been one of the greatest ever. He's just, he was a freak, man. I mean, there's guys that are strong and there's guys that are fast. He was one of the few guys really quick and really strong, you know, he could punch. And 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 and, and going over watching, like, you know, I think he was like in the golden era of yeah. heavyweight, like from Mike Tyson to Foreman, to Weatherspoon to yeah. Douglas to Riddick Bow. I mean, that was field. known. That was known. That era was it was like guys that it should have been. Well, right before that era, there was the greatest fighters that just didn't. They didn't um, amount as much as they thought. You had guys that were amazing amateurs like uh, Greg Page, uh, Mitch Green, and these guys. They just didn't do it, and they. I think it was because their lifestyle outside the ring. You know, mm. These guys were just you know they're partying a lot, and it didn't really didn't really work. You know, but people don't realize about Tyson when he first started. And he was a machine. I mean, Cus used to have him, and he would just, that was it, training. Same thing with Mayweather. I wish people would see that more, that Mayweather, I mean, I, I was real friend with his, his uncle, but his uncle passed, but his uncle would tell me, he said, Lou, this guy doesn't leave the gym. I mean, he'd be in the gym till 2 in the morning, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so. And that's one thing that made me fall in love. Before, before I came to you, uh, I was just trying to find better ways of training and not putting so much pounding on my knees yeah. and body and then you know i would watch i think it was uh the hbo 24 7 or yeah. one of those and they in the training aspect of it you know i felt in love with the grind that led up to the boxing yeah. and uh that that's the one thing that really stood out for me that i really love like fo- the the difference between football and boxing you know Boxing is one on one all the time. Yeah. You know, it's you versus you or you versus somebody else. You football, you might lose on the play, but somebody one of your else teammates Fumble might cover it. Yeah. Based on your on your career and what you accomplished, what foundation advice would you share to young listeners that want to pursue career in boxing? You know, um, the biggest thing is no shortcuts. I mean, there's some guys that can do it quicker than others, but you know, you have to, I'm sure in football, same thing, but you have to, you know, you have to pay your dues and you have to train. And something you said before, you got to believe in yourself. I mean, because you're going to, there's going to be ups and downs. It doesn't matter. I mean, nobody, you know, even if it's not winning, there's going to be, you know, not great. I remember I had a performance one time and they said I'd never fight again. It was terrible. I, I won, but I, it didn't look good. Mm-hmm. So you just got to believe in yourself and keep going. Right? I mean, that's it. And, you know, no uh, kidding aside, but you got to keep punching, man. That's yeah. it. I mean, you got to just keep going in life and in sports. I mean, you got to, you know, it's, it's really important. That's the one thing, I don't know about you, Mike, but some, like boxing, it doesn't really prepare you for life so much. But one of the things, if you look at, because I had something come up recently and I was like, you know, why am I, like, when I was, uh, if I had a fight, I, I would drop everything. I would do everything and I would just get real competitive. And so, I realized, listen, I got to treat life like that too. You know, why, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just going to, you know, and the same thing. So I, you know, I, I was drinking and I got mad and I got mad and I said, you know, let's stop. And I stopped. So I've been doing, I, I go to AA and I stopped and I haven't had a drink now. It's been yeah. about 17 months, but I had to implement something I learned in sports, you know, it just worked for me. That That's what worked. So. Mm, exactly. I always say, you know, sports is, you know, I think it's a, a foundation for kids or anybody else it helps you learn how to work with people yeah yeah and, absolutely. and you can transition to what you that that same type of effort that same yeah. type of uh, in, enthusiasm to anything you, you put and on the flip side though you gotta you know sometimes the downside can be that you know you're being what's the word i'm looking for i mean people are just you know you're you're always been in the limelight your whole life mm-hmm. you know and you're out of it it's, it's a different story you know and i always said if you make you know if you make fame or money or God, I mean, you see how many people 
like Robin Williams, so many guys take their lives and stuff, and mm-hmm. they look. You just see, you know, to the outside. I forget what Robin Williams had something like sixty million in the bank, something crazy, yeah, and yeah, you realize yeah. that you know you can't make money a god because or, or fame. You have to, you know, you have to be really balanced in a sense, you know, to go to keep doing life, you know, long long term. There's going to be ups and downs. I don't care who you are, you know. Mm, exactly. Like uh, you got always got to. I think the the thing for me is just giving and and seeing other people win uh, oh, just that's, that's all you about. know just sharing what you learned and and i don't know i always been enthusiasm i always saw excitement in others like yeah. you know i play football you know i see a guy making a play i'm gonna run over here and hit him and you're like let's do it again no, that, so that, that was just that for me that's the biggest thing is what my biggest thing is, is just if not is getting that's how i got in my head if i'm helping others or doing stuff we you know just it's it's great. That's what works for me. That's right because I have a bad habit. I'm I think way too much, man. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try not to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What uh, what do you say is your top five current fighters right now? You love watching. There's a kid that he, he there's this guy. He's really. I mean, he's one of those guys. It's going to be like a Mayweather, I believe. And uh, the, he's from Nebraska. And I'm checking now. I'm, his name slipped me. Oh my god. Uh, the oh god, the kid. He's a beast. He. Uh, here we go. I've been hitting the head a couple million times, but I, when I remember his name, I'm going to go back. Uh, so, yeah, I put him probably number one right now. I mean, Triple G is getting older, but he's, you know, and Pacquiao, it's crazy. Pacquiao, his fight just fell out with Errol Spence. Oh. Spence uh, got a detached retina, not detached, but a, uh, his retina got messed up. So he's oh, fighting man. another guy who's a really tough guy. But Pacquiao has just been so time tested. I think he's an eight division champion, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, you know, Pacquiao's on his way down, but you, you can never count them out. You know, Mayweather was great. You know, now he's passing fine. But there's some really good, a uh, couple of really good Russian guys out there now, right now, too. Mm-hmm. Triple G, Lomachenko, even though they're older than these guys. You know, mm-hmm. Lomachenko, I think he had 380 amateur yeah. fights, you know, or something crazy. Yeah, but, well, uh, and then heavyweights, you know, uh, he's a character, but the guy can fight. He's a very hard guy to fight, too. It's Tyson Fury. Fury yeah, yeah, that's and what it's exciting. Yeah. He's He's like... You know, families all in the gym. I, yeah. I was study. I was uh, doing security for that fight for the really? first fight for Fury and Wilder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a YouTube video that's going around went viral. Everybody saw because because they're all my height and up. Yeah, like right Fury is six good. nine. Yeah, Fury uh, Wilder six six. Yeah, and I was on on the stage with them when uh, they was doing their first standoff and everything got heated and. Where was that, Mike? It was in uh, it was in uh, California. Okay, the cool. first way in, yeah, the first okay. way in, and Wilder almost fell off the stage. So I grabbed him, well, and he was like, Whoop. "Yeah," he and he was like, Thank and I was like, <laughs> he was like, hey, you know, I, I could tell when they was like, "Oh, you know," he was like, "Oh, hey," I was like, "Watch, you like, thanks, big dog, thanks, man, I really appreciate that." I was like, That's "Yeah, cool, I want to see the fight too." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, <laughs> but, it's just styles make fights too. You know, Fury just doesn't look great, but he, you know. He's he can fight and he's just he's been doing it for a long long time you know and he can fight that way he's just a hard guy to fight he's so big too and you know yeah. he doesn't look like much but he can fight long arms and yeah. condition and and man it's I, I think they post a fight later this month uh, yeah well they, they no they they uh, one of them postponed it yeah one, Fury uh, team had COVID, got, got COVID. Yeah, COVID yeah, yeah Fury's team had COVID so they postponed it that happened and then what's name Spence that was gonna be a good fight Spence but the guy. The guy that uh, Pacquiao is fighting is, is not is no pushover at all. It's a Russian, uh, a Cuban guy. It's really tough, oh, really, man. really tough. Crawford, Terrence Crawford. Oh, Terrence that's Crawford. That's right, yeah. He, this yeah, guy. That's what was... I was at one of his earlier fights, and I just watched him, and he's just one of these guys, you know, and you probably saw it in football, I'm sure. But there's, you know, great, great fighters that, you know, that are really good fighters, and those are the guys that, you know, really are good, and they're confident. But the guys that are really, to me, the top guys, top fighters, are the guys that want to be there and want to show what they can do. Like a Mayweather, he's just there. Roy Jones, I mean, these guys, they want people to watch them and see what they can do. Um, uh, I, I, What's her name? Is Deontay Davis? Or De- De- I think Wilder? The, uh, the, he's under Mayweather. Yeah. Uh, G- oh, Javante Davis. Yeah, Javante Davis. I was, yeah. at, I was at his fight. Uh, I was ringside. It was cool. When he fought that guy. Uh, De La Cruz up in San Antonio. Do you remember that punch? And he just slipped and hit him with a yeah. Cut? It was one of the best punches in Man, he is but quick. He can fight. He can really fight. Man, he. I love watching himself, and he's yeah. and what, listen to his interviews. He's so poised and yeah. collected, <laughs> and he understands like 
uh, I don't know how this was with with, with you when it yeah. comes to training, but he understands no when to rest and know yeah. when to to, to work that out. Was, that's so. a great point, Mike. Because when I fought one one of my trainers, he used to say, "Better is not better. More isn't better. Better is better." Because yeah. I think I wanted to leave the gym just feeling listen. Mm-hmm. I wanted. To, I didn't. I didn't think I had a good workout unless I felt, and that really helped me a lot. And I watched Holyfield a lot. We trained in Holyfield. In the later fights, which was smart, um, and I learned from that is he didn't take as he wasn't sparring as much. They do three or four rounds because mm-hmm. if you think about it, you're not going to learn that much more. You, you know, you're peaked out with your uh, you know learning about it. He's been fighting everybody, but then you can take a you know take a lot of damage to yourself doing that sparring. You know, that's where a lot of guys get hurt. You know, you think about it, the most you're fighting a fight is 12 rounds. But for when I fought Foreman, we documented I did 570 rounds yeah. performing training for the fight. You know. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's one thing about that's one thing I wish I would have turned back a hands of time. Cause I was a person, you know, I was a low draft pick. Yeah. You know, had a lot to prove. You know, every every you know from high school I moved yeah. around a lot. So from high school, two years playing football. Then I went to junior college, another two years. Where'd you Just, go, Jericho? I went to Navarro Junior College, okay. uh, Corsicana, like by yeah. Dallas. Yeah. So, yeah. and then I went to A and M for my last two years. So every year, you know. You know, and plus I was six round draft pick, so every year, you know, I had to prove myself. I was a new guy. On, Were you playing football and baseball? A and M. I was playing football. I was I played football and basketball in, uh, in new, junior, junior college. college yeah. So, yeah, and uh, you know, A and M wanted me to play, yeah. but at at the time I had like a, a, a injury. I had, yeah. had heart surgery my junior year, and then you know I had. Wait, to, what did you say? You had heart surgery? Well, I, I was born with a. Uh, Heart condition. Uh, okay, we're tall called guys. Wolf, Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Okay, it's I a thing that has uh, what was that player's name? He the, retired. The, well, Lenny Bias. Remember Lenny Bias? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there was then, a boxer that had it too. Um, oh really? He retired. Gosh, because oh, oh, oh wait 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 I, uh, wait a boxer. It was a boxer because they had us. They had me me and uh, it was, was like on Wikipedia, like a bunch of guys who had oh, really? Parkinson White syndrome. I never heard of him. And uh, it, it's 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 a it's a hit. Uh, yeah, there was a, there was a draft pick. I remember he went to the uh, San Antonio Spurs and he had something too. But it was yeah, really, it was Aldridge. Aldridge. Yeah, big, yeah big, that's big, it. Big guy. Yeah, big guys get it. Yeah, so it's a thing where he's born with an extra vessel, and wow. during athletic av- activities, your your blood just pumps. You know, extra really? uh, irregularly fast, wow. and it just built up. How did they? How did they fix it? Uh, they 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 cut a hole through my groin, and yeah. they surgically burnt the extra vessel. Wow! That's wild. And uh, it, it it man, it was it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Well, like you had to talk about it. That's good. Yeah, it it was like when it happened. It was like my first day at A and M, and really, and I, and you know, I'm trying to start. I you know. I, I came in trying to take somebody's spot because yeah, that's my whole mentality. I'm trying to get to the league, <laughs> so I'm balling out. I'm all over the field. It's 115 degrees, and my heart started beating real fast, and I couldn't – I had trouble breathing. Wow. And I got on one knee, and I was like, man, something is real. Right. You know, this is not right. So I passed out, Damn. came to, maybe went to Austin, got the surgery. How, so how long was it before you played again? I, 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 I sat out, I think, like a month. That's it, yeah, because it was a heart surgery thing. Okay. Nothing wrong with me, you know, physically. Yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. No, just, I got you. Yeah, I just they had to do just a bunch of like conditioning tests That's and crazy. EKG tests to to make sure yeah. um, the beat and everything things yeah, was was right for me to compete. Yeah. Because you know, a year ago, somebody a and M guy died um, in practice yeah, you'd hear from heat exhaustion. Yeah, so so uh, you know, but that's that's uh, yeah, here, buddy. Still punching. Yeah, still punching. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with a fight. I'll let you know if I get a fight. Yeah, yeah, you gotta let me know, <laughs> man. My chief sparring partner. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> especially if I get older. <laughs> oh, That's right. You get yeah, older, you man, you need somebody. I, I'm not kidding, dude. I'm serious. Man, <laughs> hey, that fight will last like ten oh, seconds. No, listen, I, he's he's terrible. I gotta say. He's terrible. Uh, uh, uh. Well, look, man. The, I, the worst fight I ever seen was uh, Manu Bo was pretty bad too. I saw Manu Bo have a fight one time, and it was not pretty. It wasn't pretty. Uh-huh. A lot of basketball players, you would think that they, you know, someone that's athletic, they can throw punches. But Nate Robinson, <laughs> yeah. Everybody, oh, no. He became a meme, you know what I'm saying, yeah. on social media. <laughs> like, I could tell, I saw, when I saw the fight, I saw what happened. Like, he, he got rocked, yeah. and he just kind of threw his whole game plan out, yeah. and he just tried to just manhandle That's him. what Tyson says. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the yeah, face. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what he said. And, and, and <laughs> But... Uh, 
but no, I, I really appreciate this. No, you know, thank you, time, man, man. My pleasure, man. Anytime, you know, anything man. you want to promote? Uh, no, social I love media, coming. Thank you, know. you, buddy. No, no, everything's great, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep you posted as soon as I hear anything about okay, the Okay, okay, okay. Hey, thank we'll make you, sure. Hey, everybody. Oh, oh, yeah. And don't forget, yeah. for coming in, we got our sponsor. Let me see the camera. All right, we got yeah. our sponsors. We got Charles Woodson. Oh, that's a good, that's a good Intercept Wine. You know, he just got to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> you know, my teammate. You know, he sponsored it. Wow. So thanks for coming. Thank you, sir. You take wow. this home. Have a good That's time. That's not, I don't drink, but. Hey, we can give it to somebody. No, I got somebody, somebody who does. Yeah. Oh, boy, she yeah. 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 So, wow. man, appreciate you for That's coming. Nice. Uh, I, I, used to get the four, I used to get the four pack. <laughs> oh, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Stuff. But, hey. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hey, thanks again for <laughs> thanks coming. Again, big man. Hey, remember, everybody. <laughs> hey, it's undefeated. It's not just a podcast, but it's a mindset. You know, regardless of what you're going through, you know. Get centered, get grounded, and uh, get back to where you and get back to your goals. So. Keep punching. Keep punching. That's <laughs> it. All right. Thank y'all.